Now I'd like to talk to you about uh, the Food Safety Modernization Act. Uh, this is a new regulation that was signed into law in January of 2004. Very sweeping changes to how the U.S. FDA will be regulating food both produced here in the United States and imported. I want to emphasize that sections of this regulation are phased in over time. It's not as though everything I'm going to tell you tonight is something you need to do tomorrow or next month. They are, these regulations are phased in uh, starting in 2011 in January on through 2016. Uh, some of the sections of the Food Safety Modernization Act apply to U.S. companies. Some of the sections will apply to foreign and some to both. So why did this regulation come about? Well, firstly, or mainly, principally, I should say, uh, because foodborne illness is a significant burden. In the United States, we have about 48 million, one in six Americans get sick each year. 128,000 are hospitalized, 3,000 Americans die each year from food poisoning. Uh, we have more immune compromised individuals, more elderly people, people are living longer, that are more susceptible. Um, and uh, again, it can also, foodborne illnesses uh, can really cause lifelong chronic diseases, kidney failure, arthritis, and other diseases. So why now, though, has the Food Safety Modernization Act provided uh, come into play? Uh, partially globalization. If you look at our food supply in the United States, 15% of our U.S. food supply is now imported. Our food supply is more high-tech and complex. There are more foods in the marketplace. So there are more hazards uh, in foods than previously seen. And again, we also have a shifting demographics. We have a population that is growing older and these people, the elderly, are more at risk than in the past. We have, in the past, a lot of high-profile cases from imports that drove our legislators, our Congress, to uh, institute, to uh, create, and to uh, pass the Food Safety Modernization Act. Uh, several years back, we had issues with melamine in pet food, illegal antibiotics in aquaculture products coming in from uh, countries in Asia. Uh, we have the ability nowadays to more precisely detect E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. Uh, but we've also had problems right here at home in the United States. Uh, about two years ago, Peanut Corporation of America, a peanut producing, a peanut paste production company, here in the United States, in North Carolina, and in other parts of the U.S. had serious uh, um, quality problems. A number of people died in the United States, and uh, there were literally thousands of people sickened by uh, products produced uh, right by here by a company right here in the United States. So the main components of the law, prevention, uh, inspection, compliance, and response, import safety, and enhanced partnerships. So again, try to prevent the problems at the, from the outset, uh, increase inspection and compliance, uh, uh, build up better responses when there are food safety problems, focus more on imports, and work with our partners our foreign governments and organizations overseas enhance those partnerships to improve the quality of products being produced in foreign countries and exported to the United States. Now, right now, our current system of relying on our port of entry inspection simply cannot handle the increase in imported food in the United States. Uh, importers now are responsible for ensuring that their foreign suppliers have adequate preventative controls in place. So this is part, again, of these new requirements that are coming in. Uh, and the Food Safety Modernization Act aims to require food from abroad to be as safe as that which is produced here in the United States. 
Some quick statistics here, over 240,000, again, approximately 250,000 foreign food facilities are registered over 200 countries. 15 to 20 percent of all U.S. foods coming in from other countries, uh, that's where our food uh, originates. 80 percent of all the seafood consumed in the United States is coming from overseas. 35 percent of our produce is imported, and 60 percent of our spices that we consume in the United States is imported. 